Well, this is the second installment of our look at some basic um, arc and architectural terms from uh, Mesopotamia. And a lot of what we know about life in um, ancient Mesopotamia is derived from artworks like steles. Let me show you how that's spelled. Stele, S-T-E-L-E. -E. And that's kind of a commemorative um, slab of stone often with images carved into it. They might be um, it might be a victory stele for a battle that was won. Um, in the case of, some of you have heard of the Law Code of Hammurabi, that was one of the many law codes um, of, of the uh, ancient world. And those uh, laws were carved on a large slab, and it's called the Code of Hammurabi. And you can, um, again, it's on a stele. We learn a lot about, um, and this is just a fragment, obviously, from a particular um, historical event. Um, and this is the top part of another um, stele. This is a, a way we get a lot of information about the people. And we can see here um, the, the size of the figures all represent something. We can see the battle going on. They're obviously walking up a hill. At this point, we're not seeing as much of the registers, are we? They're sort of kind of aligned in a diagonal way. Um, but there does seem to be some cha chaotic movements. There are some places it's difficult to see. You should, if you're interested, you can pull this up online and look at it more closely. But we can see figures here who have been um, killed, and they're dropping off you know, over the sides of um, maybe this is a, a mountain. Um, so they're, they're crossing what seem like these diagonal registers. Another way we learn a lot about um, the time period is through these um, seals. Right, a seal is something um, that does just that. It seals something shut. It gives it a kind of like a stamp. Like if I were a king, I might have a, a, a gold ring with a device um, inscribed in it, maybe my coat of arms or, or my name or an image of my face. And if I wanted to send a letter, I would, and you've seen this done, you'll drop some some wax on the envelope to keep it closed and then I would press my seal into that wet um, hot wax so that when it cooled it would sort of keep my envelope shut and the person on the other end knows it hasn't been tampered with if that seal isn't broken. Well you'd have the same sort of thing on goods being transported from place to place. Um, and these four cylinder seals, you, you see the seal over here on your left, you would roll that along the clay. So obviously it would start repeating itself very quickly, but it would roll out on this expanse of clay and you could use that to seal things. This looks like a scene from maybe Gilgamesh, maybe meeting the scorpion man in the, in the, in the um, epic. And of course, we have a lot of cuneiform writings as well, and you saw examples of that in the textbook. Um, got the cylinder seals, and I do have a couple links to more cylinder seals and a link to a um, royal cemetery at Bor. This is a really nice site. Um, Leonard Woolley excavated this uh, cemetery and, and all of uh, all of this um, surrounding areas of Ur and just came up with a amazingly wonderful stuff. Um, so that's, that's a good site to go to as well. Um, da, 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 victory steel. Oh, th I like, I, I inc always include this one. Um, Chattel Hoyek is a really fascinating dig. Let me see which map I have it on. Um, go to the beginning here. Yeah, here's Chattel Hoyek up here in Turkey. They've been excavating there for a couple of decades now. It's a really large site. And again, a lot of information online uh, about, the, about the site and they're digging. They've got this large structure built over it so people can visit and explore without you know, damaging anything. Really fascinating. Um, but this particular image was found there and it gives you some idea of how people lived. This is a almost like a combination of a um, aerial view looking down on top of the houses and then a looking off in the distance at um, an active volcano which seems to be erupting. 
it looks, from what from our understanding of the excavation, excavations, that people, and you see these are all very close together. These houses were very close. You got into them through the top, right? You have ladders that would you to descend through the top um, into the structure. So that was one way of keeping people safe. Kind of a in first instance here of some city planning, it looks like. Um, and we'll look at more instances of civil planning when we go to um, examples from uh, Greece. This is one of those early examples of both a landscape painting and kind of of civil civil planning, civil engineering, city planning. Um, you also see a good bit of, we've looked at this already, a good bit of monumental art, um, gates, walls, all made out of this mud brick, um, fired to make it hard. And this would have been part of a, um, like a doorway, you would have had one on the other side and you probably would come up to here or so. It's very, you can kind of see there the stairs, They're very tall. Um, I usually take these pictures with a person in it so that you can see their height, and I, I guess I didn't do that for this one. Um, but they were meant to be imposing. They were meant to use these strange creatures, these hybrid creatures, part human, part what this looks like a bull, um, to give a sense of grandeur. You're going to see um, in, in your textbook also some uh, of these uh, walls done with this lovely um, fired blue color, right? And we'll see a lot more of that when we talk about Islamic architecture later. Oh, here, here you go. I did include an image of it. So you can kind of see how tall the people are and how large the walls are. And these weird lepopards, they call them, uh, part leopard, part serpent, just bizarre, um, bizarre animals, a lot of um, organic art, um, non-figurative, just plants and, and animals and swirls. That, again, we'll see a lot of in Islamic art as we move forward. Um, but this is pretty much it. This is, this is the, the kind of art um, we had in Mesopotamia. It wasn't really an art where you would go and say, I'm going to commission you to do a picture of me and my wife and then hang it on the wall. It was part of the buildings, part of this monumental architecture, um, and part of, um, as we, we saw back here, um, part of offerings to, to the deity. So that's pretty much all we see in terms of art from the Mesopotamian area, era, and um, that will change as we move forward, but our conception of what art is will have to change as we move forward as well, as it moves away from being um, art in the service of religion to art as decorative items, um, but that doesn't help happen for quite a while. We'll be in this world for, for a bit longer.